Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're going to take a look at this beast of a medieval longsword and some of the other weapons we just added to the KarateMart.com website. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. So, as usual, I had Amanda go back to the warehouse and grab some of our new and popular items. She's already wrapped them up for me, so I don't know what they are. That way I can give a good and honest review of each product. Now, just uh, so you know, there are links to each product in the description of this video, so if you want to check them out further, let's go ahead and do that. But without further ado, Amanda, hand me the first item. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's always fun doing this because I don't know what each thing is going to be. Okay. Oh, cool, cool. All right, these, these things are pretty sweet. I saw these come in and I thought this was the most clever idea. Um, these are called the Interchangeable Butterfly Trainers. And I'm just gonna open up one at a time. So the first one looks like it's blue and this is called the Interchangeable Blue Butterfly Trainer. So as you can see, it's got a comb for a blade and then it also comes with this this training blade right here that's unsharpened, so that's pretty cool. And then the other one, okay, cool. So the other one is our P40 Warhawk Butterfly Trainer. If we look at that, it's got that kind of shark face on the blade, which is so cool because the teeth just go into the teeth of the comb, and I just love that so much. So that's based on the P40 Warhawk plane. Um, which is such a cool design. So that comes with the comb and it also comes with a trainer blade. So let's just take a closer look at this. First off, it's made out of stainless steel and we've got this spring latch on there, which is pretty cool. And this is a little bit different. This is actually an adjustable spring latch, which um, I don't know, I'm used to the standard latches. That's kind of what I grew up with, but the spring latches are cool. You kind of squeeze the handle and then the latch opens. So then you can just start your tricks right from there, which is nice. Um, but what's so unique about these knives is, this is so cool, this is so cool. So all I have to do is just kind of squeeze on the handle a little bit, and then the handle comes off. So it's such a cool mechanism, I love that. So we can just take off that, and we can just throw on the trainer blade so quickly and so easily, it just snaps right into place. Take off the other one, throw on the trainer blade, snapped into place, and good. And it's a really nice solid butterfly knife. Like you would think it'd be kind of janky by doing that, but it's not. It's actually really solid, really secure, super fast to change out the blades. And what's so awesome also is if we want to, we can mix and match. So we've got this guy here and let's just take off these handles right here and take off these two handles right here. And then we can add you know, just different handles onto the blade. So how cool is that? And these aren't the only two styles we have. We actually have other styles as well. So you could mix and match a whole bunch of them, which is just awesome. So I love that. I mean, it's got the comb. That's, that's pretty awesome. You could use the comb if you needed to. But um, let's see, is there anything else to tell you about this? So it is approximately nine and a half inches overall. And um, it's made out of stainless steel. Uh, let's see, it's the CSGO style, which CSGO style isn't generally my favorite. I kind of prefer the straight style just because that's how I grew up with them. But um, a lot of people really like the CSGO style because it's been made so popular because of video games. And I've seen some people be able to do tricks where they're just able to kind of flip them so easily because of the curved handles. So I can see why that's popular. It's just not my favorite. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have to tell you about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these away and uh, move on to the next item. So, all right, Amanda, what's next for me today? There you go. Cool, all right. Oh, cool, awesome, awesome. Okay, so our next item is the hexagonal trick chucks. All right, so let's just pull these guys out. Okay, so these are, these are very unique. I actually came up with this idea and designed these about six or seven years ago. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to come up with a style in nunchucks that would be kind of similar to a butterfly knife, something that would be 
easily carried, and then also fun to do tricks with. So as you can see, this is very different from a standard pair of nunchucks. Uh, first off, it's made with a solid, very thin aluminum handle. What, and what's so nice about that is it makes them lightweight, very durable, and then the light just shines and reflects off of those so nicely. I just love it. And then we added these little grips into the handles, which, you know, they don't do them much for grip because I typically hold my chucks up high, but they just give it a nice aesthetic appeal. Um, so I really like that about them. But the thing that makes them so unique is this connector. So we've got this this uh, metal cable, the steel cable inside of here, and then a spring connector. And we started out by like actually designing these with just cord, and that was cool, but it didn't really roll around my wrist the way I wanted to. Like I wanted something unique that would work better for tricking, and this actually did the job just perfectly. It's got that spring over the steel cable, so it's durable and strong because of the steel cable, but the spring just gives it a little bit of recoil when you're doing your tricks. So I just love that about it. And because because it's so light, this thing's only about seven ounces, you can just move so fast with it. Like, let's see, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but compared to other nunchucks, it's really, really fast. So I absolutely love these things. I just think they're so cool. They just flow so nicely, like over your wrist. I just love that. Um, but yeah, not much else to tell you about them. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. But let's go ahead and put this away and move on to our next item. All right, Amanda, what do we have next? Yep. Awesome. Okay, a bigger box. What do we have here? This is always so fun because, you know, when we get new products in, I don't always get to see them. So this gives me a better chance to kind of get a good look at each item. Okay. Okay, this is cool. So this is the polypropylene gladius sword. So we're getting more like Roman swords, more medieval swords, and uh, we're also expanding even our like polypropylene swords because you know, you can learn how to sword fight, you can learn how to practice with these things. They're super durable. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you've seen some of my previous videos where I've tested this kind of material out. Uh, it's very, very difficult to break. Um, so I just think these are perfect for a practice sword. And they're fairly lightweight too. So this guy is one pound, four ounces. And what's kind of unique about this in comparison to our other polypropylene weapons is it's got way more detail to it. So I'm gonna try to hold this up to the camera. I don't think it's gonna show very well, but I'm just gonna kind of hold it still. And the blade, you can see it's got that design on it that's just so cool and so unique. Uh, you can see that there's little griffins in it and uh, a few other symbols, which is really cool. Um, the handguard, like look at that handguard. That just looks so awesome. And even the grip of the sword is just, just really cool looking. The pommel looks awesome. Kind of hold that up to you. Um, so I just love all of the characteristics about this. I think it looks so nice. Um, so I'm just gonna state this. The one thing I don't like about this in comparison to our other polypropylene weapons is that it's made with multiple pieces. So let's just take a look at that really quick. So the pommel, if we take it, we can actually unscrew the pommel. So I'm just gonna unscrew that completely. And I understand why they did it this way, because um, when they were injection molding it, they needed to do it in separate pieces so it would all hook together just really nicely. So we take off the pommel, and then we take off the grip, and then the handguard came off too. So this is what we have now, is we have this sword, and what kind of bothers me about that is the other polypropylene swords we have are extremely durable, and because it's one solid piece, whereas this, this is the amount of polypropylene that's there to keep it from breaking. So I think it's important that we actually test this out and make sure that it's not gonna break uh, because that kind of worries me a little bit, that, that amount right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together really quick. All right, so I've got the handguard, we'll throw that guy on. And then I got the grip right here, so we'll throw that guy on. And then the pommel, so we'll throw that guy on really quick. And it just looks really, really cool when you get it together. I absolutely love the look of it. And I think this would be so much fun to like practice sword fighting with if you got a couple of people together with these things. 
But yeah, so it's really tight. And I think the best way to test this is I'm just gonna pull out the Wing Chun dummy really quick. I mean, we're always using this Wing Chun dummy and I love it, but it really gives us a good idea of how durable this is because I can hit this pretty hard. So, all right, so let's just give it a couple swings. So, I mean, I didn't feel any shaking or anything like in this part of the handle that would make me think that it's gonna break. And you can see, I mean, it, it's hard to see, but there's just a little bit of like scraping and scuffing on the blade from where I hit it. But I mean, overall, this thing's pretty durable. I like that. Yeah, so I don't think, I don't think it's gonna break on you. I think it's actually gonna hold up pretty nicely. Um, you know, one thing I've always kind of wanted to do is test one of these out on a real sword. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do that? Why don't we actually go ahead and grab a real sword and just see how the polypropylene does against a real live blade. Um, I'll just mention first, this thing is approximately 32 inches long. Um, and I think that's about all I've got to tell you about it. So yeah, let's go in back, grab a real sword and try hitting this against that. All right. All right, so I'm gonna use this sword to test it out. This is a sword we actually got from a supplier and I tested it out, I took a look at it, I didn't really like it. Um, it's super sharp, it's actually super sharp and it looks nice from this distance, but I always like to test everything out and I found a couple of problems with it that I didn't like and I didn't think it would be a good idea to try to sell this to our customers. Um, so I think it'll make a great sword to actually test out on this polypropylene sword. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to hook it into this vise and Okay, there, that should be in pretty tight. Um, now I'm gonna grab some safety glasses really quick and, and then I'll just go ahead and swing. So I'm gonna put the video on slow-mo uh, so you won't hear anything more from me, but let's go ahead and throw on some safety glasses and give this thing a hit. All right, so we just finished testing out these swords in back, and I just wanna show you something. So here is the sword that we were hitting. I don't know if you can see it on video very well, but the blade completely bent in that direction, and that is why we don't wanna sell this sword. I could just tell when I was testing it out for the first time that it just wasn't a very good sword, um, but here is the polypropylene blade and it cut through in a couple of spots. It still looks awesome, like there's no damage to the sword itself, just some cuts in the blade which aren't gonna affect its functionality. Um, pretty awesome, I absolutely love these polypropylene weapons. I think they're so good for training. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that away and move on to the next item. All right. There you go. Thank you. All right, what do we have here? Okay. Interesting. Okay, so this is called the Modern Gladiator Sword. Okay, so this is kind of cool. Um, definitely another Roman style sword, which I think is really cool. Um, that looks awesome. So it looks like this is a 1060 carbon steel blade. So I really like that about it first off. That means it's gonna be a little more durable than a, t a 1045 carbon steel. Um, and as far as the blade goes, it's super sharp. I mean, this is one of the sharpest sword blades I think I've ever actually seen. So pretty awesome on that respect. It's got the black oxidized coating on it, uh, which will help with rusting. So I really like that about it. Plus it gives it that sleek look that I love so much. Um, it's got a thermoplastic rubber handle, uh, which I've been seeing that a lot more on weapons lately, and it's so comfortable. Yeah, like I don't imagine that you would get any blisters when using that. Oh, and then the weight. It weighs one pound five ounces, but because of its balance, 
it just feels like you could really control this weapon. Like, I absolutely love this. I, I honestly think this is one of my new favorite swords. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's approximately 24 inches long, so that's a good size for it. Uh, let's see, and it comes with this, this sheath right here, uh, which looks pretty nice, pretty solid. It looks like it's nylon and then probably has some, uh, looks like it might be some vinyl at the end, um, but it looks really nice and solid. Uh, it's got this huge belt loop on there. So yeah, that actually would hang pretty nicely from your side. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay, we've got this hole in the pommel, which I actually really like that allows you to add a wrist strap to it so you're not gonna lose your weapon when you're using it. Oh, it is full tang, that's awesome. And you can tell that by the way that this goes through the pommel, it actually is full tang. Um, it's also got this brass insert right here. So that's actually holding the blade into the handle, into the grip. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, it looks interesting. I actually like the contrast of that little brass insert into the handle. I think that looks pretty awesome. Uh, I can't think of anything else to really tell you about this, uh, but we definitely need to test it out. So let's go ahead and start with, um, I've got this pineapple over here. Uh, it seemed to work out pretty nicely last week when we were playing with pineapples. Uh, so let's go ahead and try chopping that. I think it's gonna chop really nicely because look how thin that blade is, but yet it's still super solid. Like I wouldn't worry about that bending at all. It actually is super solid, just super sharp. So let's go ahead and just slice that guy. Yeah, so as you can see, sliced like nothing. That's pretty awesome. Um, but I wanna try this on something else. Like I actually wanna uh, test it on one of these bottles here. And last week, if you saw the video, Amanda and I made the biggest mess of this room. It was just ridiculous. It was actually pretty funny because we didn't have any idea how big of a mess it was gonna be. So this week we're gonna test this out, but we're gonna do it outside. And I think what I wanna do with this sword is actually try piercing it because it's got such a sharp and unique point. Like I just, I think that is so cool. So let's go ahead and shake this up and bring it outside and try piercing it. And then I think I'll take another one and just shake it up and try slicing it. So, yeah. Now, one of the problems with doing this outside though, and one of the reasons we don't do it very often is because we're right next to the Phoenix airport. And so we've got these planes that are constantly flying overhead and it makes it very difficult for me to talk outside on camera. So I think what I'm gonna do is tell you about it here and I'm just gonna record the strikes outside and then I'll just come in and we'll talk about it after that. So, all right, I'm gonna go outside. Okay, so that got me pretty good. Now I'm just gonna try swinging and chopping it in half. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so as you can tell, that thing sliced through the pineapple and the bottles like nothing, and it pierced it just so beautifully. The only problem is I'm all wet now, and we don't want this to turn into a wet t-shirt contest. So I'm just going to wipe that blade off and let's go on to the next item. All right, Amanda, hand me the next item. Last but not least. Awesome, thank you, appreciate it. Ooh, this one's heavy. What did you find for me here? Oh, cool. Wow. This is awesome. So this is the Knights Templar Medieval Longsword. Um, so the Templar Knights were known for being some of the most skilled fighters during the Crusades. And this is kind of similar to one of the swords they might have used. So it's got the kind of Templar Knights symbol on the pommel, which is pretty cool. Um, it's heavy though, this is really heavy. This thing weighs three pounds, 10 ounces for just the sword. Wow, so three pounds, 10 ounces, just for this. And then with the scabbard, it's four pounds, 12 ounces. So fairly heavy. But uh, yeah, let's just take a look at this. So the blade is made out of a 1060 high carbon steel. So that's a pretty solid blade, especially for a medieval sword. Um, and then we also have this handguard and pommel that are made out of stainless steel. And then we can also see that the locket right here and the chape are made out of stainless steel as well. And those just look really, really nice. I like that. 
Um, the blade, it looks like we've got a really nice deep fuller in there. Like you can kind of see on the blade a fuller and um, fullers are really good for decreasing the weight of the blade. They decrease the weight, but they still keep the structural integrity of the sword. Um, so a good fuller is nice to have on a sword. Um, let's see, the handle, the grip of this. Uh, if we look at it, it looks like it's a wrapped handle, a cord wrapped handle that's also covered by a layer of leather. Uh, so as far as comfort goes, that's really comfortable. Even holding it one-handed, that's really comfortable. Now a sword this size, you would definitely use two-handed, but um, yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. I actually like that a lot. Um, and let's just look at the scabbard really quick. So the scabbard looks like it's made out of a wood. Yeah, it's wood, you can see inside there, um, but it's covered by leather. Then it's got these antique brass little buckles on here to hold the belt and the straps on. Um, the straps are made out of leather and they look pretty solid, so I like that. Um, yeah, that's overall a pretty darn nice scabbard. I actually like that a lot. Uh, let's see. I can't think of anything else to really tell you about this. I mean, that handguard is awesome. Absolutely love that. Um, but I wanna test this out. I actually wanna see how well this thing cuts, because um, this is, yeah, actually an extremely sharp sword. Extremely sharp, and I love this, the 1060 carbon steel blade. So let's go ahead and take this outside and try cutting. Actually, I've got this pineapple right here that's the same pineapple we used before. Um, so let's try cutting that again and just see how well that cuts the pineapple first. We're just gonna cut it like this. Yeah, so I mean, it just cut through like butter, just like the other one. Um, that's pretty awesome. I like that, but we need to go ahead and test this on one of the bottles of carbonated water. I think that'll be more fun to see. So let's go ahead and bring this outside and chop a bottle of carbonated water. Actually, you know what would be fun? Is I'm gonna take all three of the last bottles and chop them at the same time, because I just wanna see a huge explosion. I think that'll be fun. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm shaking all of these bottles up really well. I'm just gonna put them into a formation where it's gonna cut really nicely, just like that. Let's go ahead and uh, put it on slow-mo and see how it looks. All right, so as you can tell, this thing sliced through all three bottles just perfectly, and I actually took off a chunk of the table in the process, which is pretty awesome. That is a wooden table, and the sword is not damaged at all. It's actually still in mint condition, which says a lot for this blade. So I like that, but let's go ahead and put this away and go back inside and finish up the video. All right, so now that we're back inside and we can take a closer look at the blade, we can see that it's got a little bit of marking on it from hitting the table. Uh, but uh, as far as the blade goes, there's literally no damage to the blade itself at all. It's just perfect. So if we clean this up really nicely, um, then I can give it to one of the employees. So pretty awesome. I'm actually super impressed with how this sword held up considering it hit a wooden table. Um, so. Really, really awesome. But if you have any questions on this sword or any of the other items I showed off in this video, definitely leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out KarateMart.com because we are adding all kinds of new medieval weapons to the website and other new cool weapons. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.